This is for my young people. Rap. Now I make music at least about thousand a track. Schedules connect dust in the show. I go in my cocoon and reinvent myself. I used to watch your back, to pull out the dagger. I move too fast, coming up the ladder. Greedy and need, but I'm destined to change it. I made it, now I'm blessed. The next generation. dawned on me was when a doctor actually uh, came back to you know came back to me with this crazy information is that you know I don't get scared easy bro I've been dead a couple of times on my own you know a few times now but at the time I was told that it had already been a couple of times that I already you know been forced about this world and came back but so I, I didn't have the, the 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 instinct I guess that you know they, they expect it like you know oh my god well doc shoot me with that stuff help me get me any kind of medicine that you can no, my first instinct was, no, I don't. But I bet you if I let you shoot that shit inside me, I will. So I immediately left. And when I left, I made a decision. And right then and there, bro, cold turkey. Like every decision that I made and every decision that I make, it don't be a decision that it take me a long time to start to fathom. All I need to know is, how can I make this decision fit in with the structure and the scale that I already got going on without causing an imbalance? and then squeeze it in. But it, it was just a cold turkey decision to just stop doing everything that I was actually doing and focus on rebuilding my body. And like Big Homie say, it started in the gut. I understood that, man, listen, everything starts in the gut, like he say, and it stems over into your elementary track, right? Right up into your throat all the way up, bro. And this is what it is, pathogens and stuff like this. I started, like, I went to school for medicine, bro. Like this, I, I got a degree for this stuff. I even went to bats with my instructors and you see what I mean? Just to let them know that, man, a lot of the things that they were teaching me was incorrect and wrong. And I felt that they just, I deserved a refund, but <laughs> just seeing what kind mm -hmm. of condition that we actually in right now, bro, we in a whole condition to where it ain't just even our health. It ain't even just what's going on inside the gut. I'm not limited to what the King's saying because we need you King. You see what I'm saying? Like if it wasn't, if, if it ain't no you, then who, who going to do it? So anyway, what I'm saying is that what's going on with us, bros, we got to really be understanding that we born inside of a social structure that was already pre-developed. Right. From the language to everything was already pre-developed. So when we go through school, everything that we being taught all the way on up, and you know, look, they give us a food chain and everything. The food chain is just as crazy as the information they got us putting our right hand over our chest, players and allegiance and stuff like that in the class. Like, it's just as crazy. But we're not understanding what's taking place psychologically, right? Because you got different mm -hmm. forms of education. Believe it or not, in every community, they're not being taught the same way. Every community ain't being taught to eat pig feet, pork chops, right. chicken. You see what I'm saying? But I'm going to say this. All information ain't limited to just one specific community neither. Because you can go off into some of these impoverished communities and see that, uh, see that parents are still feeding their children vegetables. You can see that they're still trying, even though they don't know that, okay, well, listen, maybe I shouldn't be feeding my child vegetables that come out of a can. Maybe I shouldn't be feeding my child preserved foods or, you know what I'm saying, pasteurized foods or stuff like this. But then you can go off into some of these, um, what we would consider as upper class communities and see that they eating if just not, uh, you know, like uh, uh, just as bad or worse as the people inside of the impoverished community. So it's like the information ain't ain't no, uh, you know, it's unabridged. There's no bridge to it. It's not like no missing gap inside of it. 
It's just that when we give ourselves too many different excuses, bro, and I mean it's just like, no, you got to understand that for each his own, even a person that we're feeling sorry for, because the first person I learned to feel sorry for was myself. And once I realized that feeling sorry for myself wasn't going to give me nothing, there was nobody going to come and rescue me at the end of that tunnel, right? All the prayer in the world wasn't going to change nothing. All the meditation in the world wasn't going to change nothing. I can cry to my mom. I can cry to anybody I wanted to cry to, but wasn't going to be no heroes coming. No matter how low I sunk into my consciousness, bro, no matter how depressed I got, no matter what I saw or witnessed inside of the reality, bro, wasn't no savior coming. The only savior was literally me. The savior came by way of me actually recognizing certain forms of information that was being presented to me. Because even a lot of the information I was picking up on, like I got to think, I was 15 years old when I first got in uh, contact with the book, uh, Primordial Signs and Symbols of Man. I read the whole book, but I really didn't even understand it. But once I say 15, 16 years later, I started to read other books I started to remember stuff that I read in that book and was connecting dots with the stuff that I was learning and reading now. So it was like, damn. Right. <laughs> I was always on that little track. You know, the information was always right there. But I don't believe that also that life throws tests. I believe that, you know, we are creating our experiences. And a part of being able to create your own experiences, it's like, you know, we contracting with ourselves, bro. They have an effect. Every cause has an effect. And as we are creating it, we're experiencing it. Now, if we just take away all of the, the, the what we would consider as like all the extra room for people to weasel, and that's the reason I go direct with folks. Like, no, you got to show people how to become accountable. Because first and foremost, how can you expect to conduct yourself commercially if you can't even hold yourself accountable to something so simple as a diet? You see what I mean? Like, this is why we inside of the positions where the food that we can afford is the cheap stuff because we ain't learning to conduct ourselves commercially. We pushing ourselves into these ruts, bro. Like there are investments that, and I, and I don't mean to like knock nobody groove, bro. What I'm saying is, you know, to each his own, you know, you have brothers and sisters saying, well, man, they ain't opening up no door for us. It's hard for us to get in, but no, you got brothers on this phone right now. That's telling you that, we created our own path. Then nobody opened up the door for us. Nobody rolled out no red carpet. But you got to understand that you're not going to find no good investment at Foot Locker. Standing outside of Foot Locker at 6 o'clock in, uh, in the morning waiting on the new uh, 13s to come out. You're not, bro. You're not going to find yeah. no real investment at the rim shop. You see what I mean? Like, that's just where you're not going to find it at. So we just don't understand that we're spending all our money and ain't none of our money having a reciprocation and it ain't bringing nothing back to us. And then we only understand money as being green debt currency notes, not realizing that our signature is the most valuable thing that we actually have. Now, I don't subscribe to no religious or spiritual uh, groups, none of that. I'm just me, right? I ain't knocking what nobody got going on. I'm just doing me. I use straight law, bro, because I understand the law. I understand their tax codes. I understand what the UCC is. I understand what Title 26 is. How to read Title 18, Title 11, Title 13, Title 8, Title 7 and 5. Like, I understand these, bro, because I read them. So this just gives me the ability now to see how they're doing what they're doing. They turn you into debtors when you were originally a creditor. But now we play the victim role. We ain't got to be scrounging and looking for our way from the bottom, bro. All we got to do is learn how to hold our own. If we learn how to hold our own, we'll stop crying about what these people is or ain't giving us. And like right. I said, to each his own. My whole thing, my whole key here is to link up with brothers like the man right there, you know what I'm saying, so that we can uh, show these brothers how to keep their health right. Because, you know, anything that go on in your body is going to play a, a large role what's going on inside your mind. What's going inside your mind going to also reciprocate the energy back into your body. And all that's going to do is just make you enable to make proper decisions. You see that I know a lot of healthy people right now, physically healthy people. And I mean, they veganed out, all of that. But they still can't tell you how to get out of them financial crises they're in. They still can't tell you how to get that bank off their back. You see what I'm saying? They still can't tell you how to get that, that, that police that just wrote them a ticket off their back. 
they still can't get these rogue judges out their business, these credit card agencies and stuff like this. So this is what I'm saying, that we got to learn how to find a balance and stop thinking that we can section what's going on with us off into like one category. Like I see you've got one of the brothers on here that's invested in like, you know, the crypto powerful shit. You got to be real sharp to get into that. Now, I also want to introduce to these brothers and plus everybody that's listening, plus these brothers on the line. We got to get more invested in what we call recession proof assets. Okay. That's what we need. Supremes recession proof assets. And when we can come together and start building recession proof assets, like that man say, when he started digging into what these minerals and things do inside the body, well, man, these minerals are the only thing that really on the planet has value. That's the reason these people are doing the best that they can to suck the currency of the nation dry. They even trying to suck the minerals out of your body dry. They bleeding them out, catching them in the ocean. You see what I mean? So that's a, a, a real important key for us, man, to just be all around balanced, man, and being able to come together. Uh, come together. The most crazy thing amongst, and I'm finna just be the one to say it amongst black people today, is that we just can't find a medium, G. Whenever we get into a presence of other intellectual black people, we feel intimidated or as if we challenged and we can't work together. You see what I'm saying? It's like inside of the group, we're trying to find out who the big I and the little you is. And it ain't never supposed to be no big I, little you. Execute your fullest conviction inside the lane you in. Play the role that you say you came here to play. You see what I mean? And then we can get there. But with that being said, man, how I got here with this man is just being broke and sick. I figured out how to not be sick and how to not be broke. <laughs> and to teach my people that it's easier than you think it is. It's not, it ain't got nothing to do with you standing up, fighting nobody, arguing with nobody. Bro, listen, these people want you to step up and take accountability for yourself because you not taking accountability for yourself keep their books unbalanced. Now they got to come chase your ass down and try to figure out how to balance their books. And then you're wondering why they got these crazy charges on me, dog. That's because, bro, they not telling you why they're charging you, but they're using the excise tax on you. That's all. The charge is just a statute. It don't even apply to you. It's fraud. You can beat that. You need to be trying to figure out what the excise tax is on the private side that they're trying to actually bring against you. They're just trying to say you owe some money. You owe a debt. Who do you owe an antecedent debt to? You see what I'm saying? So, like, this is what I'm saying, bro. Being able to come together just like that right there, a powerhouse, to where we can help each other get up out of these predicaments. Indeed, indeed. Thank you for this powerful, this powerful words, Brother Dynamo Jack. I know you would have dropped it, you know, I mean, un unapologetically, uh, if I said it right. <laughs> But thank you for this. And uh, as you heard it from the man himself, and he already put the platform ready. All you need is uh, the, the okay from your own self to understand what you need and what you need to level up within your own uh, uh, hey, selves. Real quick, bro. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, can I, let me just say this before I you know, uh, close out on this. And I just want to say this because I want people to understand what when I say status correction, what is correcting your status? What I mean is just correcting the status of your estate. That's all you're doing. You're correcting the status of your estate so that you can actually inherit, not the liability, but the beneficiary capacity of the estate. You see what I'm saying? So like, that's what we're actually doing. It's not going crazy and with everybody, you know, with the sovereignty, we just going nuts. No, we're just correcting no, no. the status of our estate. Oh, we appreciate you for clarifying that. Because I always say sometimes when we hear words, we think just because we, we are familiar with the words, we understand the context behind them. But, you know, it's good to ask questions. Asking questions doesn't mean, like asking the brother, what do you mean by status correction? It doesn't mean that you, you don't know or not. It's just, you see, you, you, you're trying to look for clarification. You don't want any misinterpretation, misconceptions, and stuff like that. That's all it is sometimes. You see what I mean? So I, I appreciate the, the, the clarification, brother. Thanks for that. And, uh, you know, uh, I didn't even think to, to, to say it, but I, I thank uh, you for 
bringing it about. So uh, with that uh, being said, also next is uh, the next level uh, after, you know, the, the God clearing that and then now uh, being yourself, you see what I mean, uh, uh, as a sovereign being and sovereign spirit or something like this, experiencing life to, in order to grow. Uh, now is the, you know, interactions, though this had to do with the interacting, the, the, the contracts, the business part also, but um, the, 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 the medium of the change itself is the one and only uh, Exo Miller L, who is here with us to, as a business consultant uh, and, uh, and, and more. So to let us know, how did you get into this work, um, Brother Exo? And uh, what do you have uh, uh, for us for the year 2020 and beyond coming that you think we should be aware of and be participating in? Floor is yours. Okay. okay. Again, brother, I appreciate it. Um, salute to the brothers that have spoken. Uh, my first time building with y'all, man. I'm happy to be here. Salute. Um, so, wow, brother, it was it was so much said just now, man. I can't help but to you know, make a, a bit of like comment on everything that I've heard thus far. You know what I'm saying? Cause I appreciate what every, what, what, you know, what everybody had to say just now. Um, you know, if I recall, you had made mention, Vlad, about the society piece, you know? Indeed. And um, I, I just think to myself, you know, from everything that I've heard, like, the reason that I got into this work was I had noticed the thing that was binding us as a society outside of like bloodline, right? The only thing that really was allowing for us to cooperate with one another beyond the bloodline, beyond our tribe of, you know, cause if we deal with it from a traditional standpoint, like, you know, like 150 people. But when you have like civilization, like cities, you know, you know, very large ethnic structures, you know, like a whole bunch of black people, you know, like Nigeria or like Brazil. You know what I'm saying? For us to work together, the thing that was binding us was the money. And I'm going to kind of I'm going to kind of build into that, you know what I'm saying, as I'm talking. But I'm going to say that the money. Allow for us to actually cooperate on a larger scale, because we're cooperative with our family. We got familial bonds that cause us to interact in a certain fashion, but, and I'm talking about being civil, right? Like interacting as if you have home training, you feel me? <laughs> Knowing how to speak and behave. Um, you know, we didn't really owe anybody that obligation. That's the whole point. Like when we deal with just the naked, you know, human being, they don't really owe you nothing. Nobody really owes you nothing. But we, you know, we were encouraged to act civil, right? We have home training. Like, even in our, you know, lowest state, if you will, right, we're definitely not in the golden era as a people. We still at least teach our children, right, home training. Like, we could do better, but that's the first part about this whole society piece. You know what I'm saying? The speak and behave concept, and more importantly, the money concept. Um, so I think that it's a kind of surmise that whole idea about you know how I got into this work and 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 this sort of thing. Like I'm interested, you know, in the healing. I'm interested in the development, the growth and development, you know what I'm saying, of us, as, for myself, for us, you know? So I had realized that money played an intricate role in, in, in the healing, if you will, right? Now, this is, gonna, this is where the controversy is going to start coming in. The money or the commerce is is healing for the individual for the nation for the for the group for the ethnic group right i just want to i'm just I'm, I'm trying to keep it as, as simple as possible i want to say this though as as i'm, I'm totally following you bro 
Yeah, I'm 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 gonna button it up with this though. I'm gonna say power. You you had also said that, Vlad. You had made mention, um, or at least something you had said made me think about power. Um, maybe you could remind me, but I think to myself that yeah, I'm for the empowerment. I feel that when our folks have power, I, this is what I'm really motivated by. I'm saying empower is an interesting word because again, that's where I, you know the growth and the development comes in. That's that's that equals power for me. Um, I feel that it is only. I feel like that's when you know what people are healthy. Like if you were to observe like a group, like a, another ethnic group, like I live in Chinatown. When I see their growth and development around me, I know they're doing good. They're buying up more and more business plazas and they're like right beside each other. Can you imagine that? We don't like for each other to even get money. When we see somebody beside us getting money, it's a problem. Asian people, it wasn't by chance that they own businesses right beside each other and they're not trying to like, you know, put each other out of business. They're cooperating. You know, obviously they had even a meeting before they got the property and opened the business right beside the other Asian guy. Right. You dig? So again, it, there's a heat, there's, there, there's something that you can observe in like a people's commercial activity and like their actual health as a group. You know what I'm saying? And it, again, this is, this is just kind of focused on society. And I say, you can also see their power in that, like power and vitality for health. Good health equals vitality, you know, as opposed to being decrepit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now here's here's another thing that I'm willing to engage in like head on. And this is kind of important to me because I wasn't always this way. I didn't have this understanding at all, at, you know, the whole time. Um, I have been contemplating a book uh, that I've titled Artifice and Elegance. Obviously, artifice is the root of artificial. And, and of course, as the title states, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stating that there is an elegance in that. There's a beauty in that, in the artifice, in the, in the artificial. And I think that once we comprehend that, right, like truly comprehend that, I think we'll be like as a group and as individuals living life more fully because it's, it's the balance, right? I'm not saying do away with the natural, I'm saying as a natural being, learn to comprehend and see the beauty in the artifice, in the artificial, because there is something there. Like, I feel like, how about this? All of this here is contrived, meaning thought up. Somebody thought this up, this whole, all of these social, economic, you know, uh, educational, all these structures that we call civilization, society, and understanding, thought, God, these, these are all thought of, they're all artificial, they're all contrived. Somebody, some at some point in time, among our folks more than likely, including this money thing, somebody thought this up, you know what I'm saying? So it's not really something that nature created, it's something that we put our minds to. You know, so I'm saying we should learn to value even the thought, the thing that is making all these things around us. We should have a greater appreciation. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, let me let me kind of get into that structured thing, though, for a minute. Um, I, I, I agree with the brother, as he was saying, you know, it's about structure and scale. We need structure. I believe in structure. I'm not, I'm not an anarchist. I believe in order. You know what I'm saying? If I have any kind of like belief system, you know, I'm like old school with it. There's certain principles and certain things I don't stray from, 
because one has brought me success you know is it's i maintain my vitality you know so obviously i'm i'm blessed and i'm grateful you know so i'm interested in scaling structures and again what has brought me into this bitcoin thing is that i've noticed that it's it's an enabler for that because it's a technology it's not just a good investment it's not like just a good investment because it is that but it's not just that it's an enabler to like a proper in my opinion proper structure and scale like the ability for us to kind of wherever we're at as a diaspora you know we can we can make it happen and it, and in fact it's not even built for like it to be a big me and a little you because i i have to i have to say that too you know this is this is uh this is where the cause and effect in my estimation comes from cause and effect so you know i guess that you could say it's like that mentalism you know principle i believe that if you got like a slave mind a worker mind then you're going to be that cause that attributes to that effect right that outcome so you play that role as a character you're going to do the things required to end up as the destiny of a fool or as the destiny of a king right mm -hmm. like that now that requires that a person be mindful be responsible you know what i'm saying these are just old these are just basic concepts you know what i'm saying this isn't even you know deep like that but i i feel like maybe many of us didn't have the opportunity to get that home training you know i'm i'm I, like like the brother was saying the, the brother was saying you know we need to keep it simple yo keep it basic <laughs> and i'm gonna tell you what i mean by that listen wash your ass pay your bills stop lying it's real basic if you can start doing some of them basic things right there like when i say pay your bills i'm saying when you give your word you know what i'm saying execute on that because as the other brother was saying um you know it's the contracting your word you know people need to be able to honor that and again, with these foundations, we actually start to get into like this idea of money. What is money? You know, I, I think some brothers have an understanding. They maybe they've educated themselves and found out money is a belief system or they'll say money is bartering. <laughs> you know, and both of those um, have their place in the evolution of money. Yes, yes. But I think that um, when you look at money in its origin, you find something different. You, you actually find like a belief system, like as, as the first you know, concept would come forth with. You see that on the money, there's these people, like look at the money, there's people on the money that again this is for those that have eyes right maybe you don't have eyes so this is for the blind the people on the money represent a certain quality of character so now expand the mind and think about all the different monies on the planet and what kind of faces may have been on them what kind of characters may have been a, may have been reflected on the money right so if you go into you know, we'll say Africa, you go into Asia, you go into the Americas, you go throughout time. They're gonna have certain individuals on the money. Now, what's that about? Again, it's a quality of character. You know? Um, if we're gonna deal with, 
with this thing in, in my perspective from a, a, a balance, you know, we can't just keep it material like, you know, money is something material, whether we're talking gold, silver, paper, money, uh, you know, uh, houses, land, you know, resources, you know. There is something about the money that has a spiritual context. And I, I do want to kind of point to that. When, I, when I'm talking about the characters on the money, it's because I think that, and I'm going to be forthright with this. I think that our forefathers, our foremothers, they had created this context. And I think that they had just gamified it, right, if you will. Like, that's why we say it's the game, you know? You got to have a certain amount of game about yourself, you know, like strategy, this kind of thing. Like, I think that our four parents, long time ago, created this idea of, like, character development right like like de developing merit like a meritocracy like the one who had the best character was the one you know what i'm saying who was elevated to the highest level in society i think they gamified this and they did it in the form of these little tokens like you know how you play a video game you play like mario and you're trying to get these coins right like the whole game is get enough coins you get to the next level get enough coin you get to the next level you get enough coin next level you know you was trying to get these points so you know what i'm saying it's almost like in the hood you know or growing up young it was about the cool points you know some of y'all may not know that I, that kind of gives y'all my generation you know my age group um but it was all you know again it's about this this character development is the whole point here um when we say when we say commercial i'm gonna say this man it is it is transactions it's interactions and i think that it would it, again the sign of a healthy individual is when they want to have good interaction so i say one way in which we can engage in this kind of practice is with business and what other context do we have incentive and i'm saying the reason why we lose the attention of our children the reason why the indigenous you know indians lost their children and native americans lost their children to the white man right why do black children as opposed to staying in the community and developing that joint why do they want to go off and go live with the white folks is because the white folks have been have incentivized a certain behavior there is value in that is the point that i'm making so i'm saying we should be able to do the same meaning incentivize our children like you normally do what you do you give them a treat you give them some candy you give them some fruit you give them some attention right you give them something to incentivize the behavior so i'm saying we have to adopt that context you know um again commercialism causes one to have to keep one's word otherwise you're penalized and you outright know that from the rip like you don't get to play emotional games with people about oh you know yeah i know i lied no there's gonna be there's a penalty for that <laughs> you know what i'm saying you're not gonna do business be lying and everything's all good La, there's a penalty for that because we're not trying to have the other kind of behavior what other kind of behavior the 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 again so we said that there was like this slave mindedness so when you're a mastermind when one maybe comes to the understanding that okay i'm the cause <clears throat> For, for this surrounding that I have, you know what I'm saying? It was my thoughts, what I was ingesting, what was coming out. You know, it was what was in my body, what I was ingesting, what was coming out, you know? It's, 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 it's one of those things where commercialism is one of the first things that causes you to start being mindful of that very concept, especially if the health hasn't hit you yet. Because a lot of the times we only come to these understandings after the health is bad. And this is this is what's crazy to me. 
I just think the more we in, in, in improve on our commerce and maybe even make that a, a prominent factor in the household, right? Because you can practice cooperative economics in the house. That's one of my favorite things to do. I'm going to be honest with you. I love tasking my son with certain things and him already comprehending that it, it requires his effort, his giving before he receives anything. And I love to like extend the gratification, like meaning, you know, maybe you get the your comeuppance right away, but the older he gets and the more that I task him with, I extend the gratification as far as the time preference. Like as opposed to him, you know, about to cry because he's not benefiting yet, right? Or he feels like he is owed something he likes to work and again i use this whole little you know like i said the commercial aspect of life i think brings out a better quality of character faster okay um last thing that i want to say man and i've said a lot man i appreciate y'all brothers man having patience with me um i want to say this about you know where we where we are right now where we are right now is is like okay cool we got a lot of information out here we have a lot of information out here let's put it into action because you know what we find out as soon as we put it into action we find out what people are made of right away you know it's real easy for us to come amongst each other and like congregate because in fact, we like to do it. And, and, and you know, some people feel like that's a bad idea because wherever it's a lot of black people, you know, it's gonna be a problem. But the deal is, is this, you know, we'll congregate when there ain't no accountability. There's no responsibility. But when you start to have responsibility and accountability, you're gonna see something in our people. You're going to see something in yourself. One of the first things that you're going to see, and this is, you know, the truth. One of the first things you're going to see is, is you're going to find out again, the quality of character amongst the people that you are interacting with. Because as long as there's no obligation, you don't really know who you're dealing with yet. And I'm talking about even amongst us as a group, not just the other people, uh, us as a group. Like I heard the brother talking about being a debtor and that we should be the creditor. This is the foundation of that. If you're not able to keep your word, you have no value, you have no credit. Because again, that's like, again, the contract, when you say like, oh, I want such and such, and they're like, cool, sign the contract, then you you know don't want to pay your bill you don't want to pay your bill those people told you before you signed up for that bill what that was going to cost and all i'm saying is it's like just be a man of your word and i'm saying it's not even to them what you're going to find out is is once you come amongst your own you're going to find out who is you know what i'm saying whose word is any good this is the essence of the money the other the other concept and this is the final thing i excuse me that i have to say you know and this is speaking of character now you know as an ethnic group man like we share like a similar history and i would just say you know playing out the role of that character one of the most important things to us is our labor like that's you know we we suffered from you know, them robbing us of our labor for hundreds of years. That's the essence of it. That's what slavery is. We can talk about, you know, again, how maybe we have, you know, degraded spiritually, but I've, I think that I've covered that well by talking about the quality of character amongst us. It degraded the character. That's that spiritual context, you know? But the other thing is, is they robbed us of our labor. So let's let's deal with 
They robbed us. Hundreds of years worth of value. They didn't have to pay. Can you imagine that? Imagine if you had an idea and you just had people to like do your bidding. You could be an idiot, you know, but like you got bodies. So, you know, maybe you can make a bad idea work. You got enough bodies to throw at it, you know? But, you know, I digress. I, I say again, they robbed us of our labor. Again, this enabling technology, right? And I'm going to find a lot of capital, uh, you know, put the capstone on it with this. It's an enabling tool that allows us to store our labor. And I think that the biggest difference is, is that we could store it in many different stores of value. A lot of people are thinking gold, silver. Other people think land, real estate, you know? That's how I'm going to store my labor. I'm going to work and I'm going to, whatever they give me, I'm going to, you know, do whatever it takes to get this particular store of value so I can transfer the value through time. Because one day you're going to get old. And you want that labor that you put in, you want to be able to transfer that throughout time even beyond yourself. This here Bitcoin thing, you know, again, I wasn't a believer in like, you know, technology or any of that kind of thing. But the value that I've seen in it that played a most important aspect to healing the character that I'm talking about. Again, some, what are they, the ADOS, uh, just about every movement that ever existed amongst our people. You know, again, it was about you know, the quote unquote equality. It was about us being able to be the masters of our own destiny, if you ask me. And that's the other mind state, the master. We we got to we got to play the role. You know, do the things vital to the title is how it was broken down to me. Man, I appreciate y'all, man, just listening right now, man. I hope we uh get to interact with each other as we move forward. Absolutely. Most definitely. Vlad done disappeared. Hey, bro, I just want to, before we uh slide up out of here, man, I just want to say something too, man, on, on, on what you were saying about as far as commerce, you know what I'm saying, functioning in commerce. You said something vital, man, about, you know, uh, keeping your word. But I want everybody to understand that in commerce, you're not the only person that's actually expected to keep your word. The industry, the commercial industry is expected to keep its word too. And part of being able to function inside of commerce is knowing how to go about making, <coughs> excuse me, the commercial industry keep its word and not forfeit on some of these contracts. For instance, when I was explaining a minute ago, of what we go through and what we going through, like, you know, let's just say, you know, you get pulled over. Police give you a ticket. They say, okay, well, look, man, you was doing 75 and 50. Now you get a ticket. You don't know what to do. You think you just got to go to court because she was doing 75 and 50. Police said so. You got caught. Well, doing 75 and 50 ain't against the law. Now, it may be illegal, but it's not against the law. What's lawful and what's legal? It's two different things. Hold you know, on. We got to be. Let me ask you a again? question. I was going to yeah. say, hold on real quick. Uh, pardon. I, I really want to interject because I want us to really grow, grow in, the, in the conversation right now. Yeah. Right. So I, I wanted to ask you, you know, just using that there example, I'm going to I'm going to get I'm going to split hairs with you for a sec. So the law, like you said. It's not it's not unlawful. It's illegal, right? Yeah. OK, so the deal is, is this. So, you know, being within a certain jurisdiction, you're like obligated for like the common cause, the common cause being life, quote unquote, right? Life, liberty, property. The violation of the speed, just as an example, and I'm in agreement with you, I want you to know that. It's not that it's unlawful. It's not that somebody's going to die by nature, like nature made it this way that 
because you speed and somebody's going to die or you're going to crash. No, but it's illegal. The legalness is about the social contract. And it's not that I'm in disagreement about the lawfulness or the Ill illegality. What I'm saying is, is that when you get to the heart of the matter, for the sake of society, you see, they they all agree to that. We've all we've all whether we've known at some point in time, whether it's the driver's license or some you know aspect, you've agreed to a certain protocol, a certain a certain a certain uh, rules and regulations. So although it's not it's not unlawful, meaning you're you're not necessarily uh, on the inside a bad character person. On the outside, again, you could be potentially you know causing harm or at least doing something that could be considered negligent because you have value. If you kill, even if you kill yourself, <laughs> right? Even if you kill yourself, hey. You, that, but I'm gonna say not be a right, Listen, I get what you're saying, King. But check this out. Yeah. This and listen. When we're talking about like, okay, lawful and legal. You know, it's illegal for you to perform oral sex on your wife. And I don't mean to be just a uh, a uh, uh, rule about what I'm saying, but I'm just showing you that. Yeah. See, this is how since like this, this is how up close and personal what legal and illegal really is. Versus what lawful and unlawful really is. Now, I get that. being it's that listen, things like Sharia. illegal, just check me out real quick. Just check me out. Yeah. Now, being that things are either legal or illegal don't mean that they are either just or unjust. They are just taxable events. Now, let's just say speed Correct. limit over here is 65 miles per hour. I'm doing 85 miles per hour. Now, mm. we say, okay, well, what is the legality of it? Well, there is no legality of it. There is no oath of office that you put, that you swore to perform. The mm -hmm. thing is, two things, well, three things took place, maybe in the course of your lifetime. One, your birth certificate. Two, your social security card. Three, your baptism. Mm -hmm. These three events gave three different corporate bodies the ability to actually create excise taxes. Now you got over 400,000 laws being passed each year under statutory codes. I've been now, with statutory you. codes in a public law just represents the fact that we are functioning under admiralty. They would never use the word admiralty, use statutory, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is, is that this is just a jurisdiction that it applies to a certain group of people, but it don't apply to a certain group of people. But the certain group of people that it don't apply to don't know that it don't apply to them and that it only applies to the other group of people. So when you got people like this, it's like now, let's just say me, my child, my family, we go to Great America. Well, I litter. And Great America decides that, you know, hey, well, listen, you littered on our property. So therefore, either you're going to pay us five hundred dollars or we're going to lock you inside of a cage back here that we got for people that owe us money for Litterman. Like this is a corporate decision that they made, right? right? So it just goes to show you that this is what's taking place inside of a franchise. Now, in order for these, what's legal to apply to you, that means that you have to swear some type of an oath, right? Not an oath, but an oath of office. Only the president swore an oath, but you would have to swear an oath of office to actually allow this to apply to you. So my thing is with nah, the people that's just being true. able to show them, yeah. And I'm explaining to you how. Just, just well, let, let me, me let me let me finish it up, bro. That was the whole purpose of us letting you go. Pardon, sir. Yeah, but now, what applies to you has to apply to you through agreement, and only through agreement. An agreement can be done through acquiescence, meaning that an affidavit not rebutted or not uh, uh, not rebut an unrebutted affidavit stands as truth in law. All we're dealing with is contracts. So it doesn't matter how you try to proceed with a situation. And it's the reason that you see people going into these courts and not getting any remedy or relief anymore, because no matter what you go in there arguing, you're only dealing with a contract that you don't know exists. But now when you sign, let's just say, I don't care, a traffic ticket, that's approval, that's acceptance. 
Now that you accepted this contract, you didn't return the value of it with your own stipulations, like something so simple as retaining all your rights according to UCC 3-108, something like that. You see what I mean? Because now it's like you endorsing a blank check to somebody, but you don't understand this. They understand this. And when you get inside of one of them courtrooms, they got a language now. That language just sounds like it sounds in an everyday English vocabulary, but it's not. They ask you a simple question like, okay, well, Mr. Such and Such, do you understand the charges that's being read against you? Well, you know, in your everyday vocabulary, you think understand means comprehend. But understand doesn't mean comprehend in legalese. It means do you agree? And then you say, yes, Your Honor, I agree. I mean, I understand. I understand the charges because you're thinking that he's asking you, do you comprehend? And then he say, well, sir, how do you plead, guilty or not guilty? And you say, not guilty, sir, because you think that you're saying, I didn't do this. But that's not what you're saying. When you said that you understood, you said that you agreed. But when you said you plead not guilty, what you said is, I ain't paying. So now what they do is they got this little system, and it's just using paperwork. It's the same way you go to a bank and get a loan, right? On one end of the promissory note, which is the accounts receivables, you are viewed as the debtor, the endorser, the accommodating party. But on the other side, which is called matching principle, right? Matching principle is just showing that there's a double bookkeeping standard being ta uh, taking place at all times, even in court. The judge got a file in his office and there's a file inside of the open court. The file in the open court has your name inside of all capital letters as an accommodating party. The file in the back of the judge's office, which he just being a chief finance officer, it has your proper standard upper lowercase name and your regular credentials, right? Because you're just using the commercial entity as the transmitting utility for the privatizing or the fractionalizing of the banking industry. Anyway, so now what you do is go through a process filling out this paperwork. Say, even if you're getting a loan, like I said, something so simple, they immediately force you into, and you got to read the, the first lines of these letters that's on these loans, or the, uh, the first lines on them loans. They're letting you know that this is for a claim or a debt antecedent, right? So an antecedent debt just lets you know that the debt that you're actually accepting right now is not the liability for the commercial instrument you're signing. You're accepting a liability for a pre-existing claim that the United States already has against you by way of acclamation, your birth certificate, social security number, and baptismal record, because they stand as equitable or they hold equitable title. So when I say all of this, bro, I'm telling you that no matter what you're going through, it has to be through acquiescence, acceptance. If you receive a summons in the mail, that's just a presentment. It's an offer to contract. You can accept that and then return that for value. It don't mean that you have to accept liability for it. Now, you can say, well, listen, I accept the charges for value based upon the conditions, such and such and such and such. Now, you place it back on them. You see what I'm saying? So, it's, you know, the ball is still open. But this is just how you do business and commerce, bro. Like, no matter who you get a letter from, somebody can send you a letter right now saying that you owe them $2,000. Believe it or not, if you don't know how to actually rebut that affidavit proving to them that you don't owe them $2,000, then you owe them $2,000 whether you did business with them or not. And all they got to do is take the contract into a courthouse. And when a judge uh, do what they call a, a foreclosure or a forfeiture, right, a forced judgment, you wondering how or why? It's because the contract itself. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't need you to actually sign it for it to be valid. Implied or expressed is, is acceptable under their law. So they saying she, even if you don't respond, that's good enough for us to believe under the general rule that you are accepting the arrangements of this contract. So this is what we're dealing with. So that's what I mean when I say in order to be forced upon to anything that has anything to do with legal, whether legal jurisdiction, brother, 
You have to do so by acquiescence. You have to do so in agreement. So I, I definitely, I'm, I, you know, I said it before, and I know that it, it sounds like I'm, and I guess I am to a certain extent, you know, kind of arguing the issue. Um, so, yeah, everything you said is, is right and exact. You don't have to sign something to be party to, right, or liable for within this society. And that's in most societies, more most uh, nation states, right? Because most societies are, are found within nation state jurisdictions. So this is pretty common because they're all kind of based upon this one here. So, you know, at the end of the day, I, I want to say it like this, right? I try to, in my in my in my mind and in my dealings i try to just deal with us so now the contracts that i do have like just imagine not dealing with them or at least dealing with them in the context and the terms that we want to deal with them on once we're once we are dealing with them in the way that we want to deal with them contractually you know because that's how we want to deal with them at the end of the day. How about when we interact with each other? It's still contraction, written or otherwise. And the question becomes, when somebody like your brother or your sister comes to you and says, you owe me or you wrong me, what we're hoping for on a good day is that your quality of character has developed to the point that you are able to remedy the situation on your own. Otherwise, the rest of society has to band together to hold you accountable. We're not talking about anybody outside of us right now. That's the nature of justice. That's the nature of society. My right, bro, everything is built on is trust relationship, King. It don't matter yeah, what, what I'm, what I'm trying to get across, though. What I'm trying to get across, though, is this, though. Right. Surely we need to know how to fend ourselves against others. Surely. And I feel like that's what a, that's what a lot of is required. That is required to know how to defend oneself. The other thing that is a requirement is actual growth and development. One of the one of the first things that I think all of us could do better with is getting in corporate order with one another. Having relationships that are not only personal. I know you, I grew up with you, your family, this sort of thing. Right. To even beyond hobbies, you know, oh, I, you know, we smoke or we, we like to go uh, do yoga or we like to, uh, you know, we like cars. You know. Go to the gym, you know. I think that when we get into business with one another. I think that these types of bonds go beyond, you know, the, the the short term, if you will. Although, you know, we can make a very quick decision to make some quick money or whatever as a, as a little group for a short amount of time. I think that when we get into business and we start working, just think about the nature of work. Especially many of our parents, they worked wherever they worked or they did whatever they did, like for a lifetime, like that was their that was their work. It's like the brothers that are on the line now. Maybe we have all come to, come to an understanding about the meaning of what we're going to do this life and the work we're going to do this life. I'm just a believer that, you know, pay that man. A servant is worthy of his hire. I don't think any brother that's here should not be compensated for his labor. 
I don't care how the brother feels. I'll be the one, you know, it's like when a brother gets a, a an award, you know, and he's like, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And I'm like, no, brother, you're going to take this here because we honor you. Hey, Supreme, with all due respect, man. Hey, I yeah. got to ask you where we going with this, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I got to ask you where we going I apologize for I, Maybe I'm, I'm kind of going on and on and on. No, because I, 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 I ain't trying to be rude. I just feel like you're trying to figure out what you're trying to say at the same time you're saying it. And, and, and in that case, man, we ain't got to be disrupting each other. We really ain't already got it figured out. Yeah, no, so, no. You know what? It's not even, it, it, it's more along the lines like of this. I apologize. I, I, I'm, I apologize, man. I'm, I'm very happy, man, to be talking with y'all. I'm going to keep it real. Um, I guess the thing is, is that it is very simple. You know, just focus on yourself, man. It's not even about people attacking you because a lot of times we draw that to ourselves focus on yourself focus on yourself build yourself up and 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 again interact with people and the most honest interactions and surely you know that nature ain't gonna let nothing happen to you the people around you that you didn't develop relationships ain't gonna let nothing happen to you in fact you're gonna live in a state of abundance that's what I have to say about that, brother. I thank you. I, I thank you for bringing me back. Hey, no, it's all love, King. Hey, and I appreciate it all. And nigga, you dropped some jewels up in here today. That's hey, you know, I took that, put them on, man. I ain't uh, I'm just sitting here like, wait a minute, man. Now, something has got to happen. But at the same time, because of the simple fact that we can't just be speaking and spitting, that means we gotta be having a a a, a camaraderie built between the communication. And, yes. you know, I know the big homie, you know what I'm saying? He got something he want to spit out there. And it ain't like, because of the simple fact is, it's like when, the way you did it, like with the splitting hairs, it's like you made it seem like you was dissenting when it wasn't really a dissent. It's like, you see what I mean? It was more so like a, I don't know what that was, like a rant a little bit. But I ain't yeah. dissenting from nothing you, uh, nothing you said, bro, because I totally agree with you. It's just that you got, it's, it's simple. Like big homies say, simple. We dealing with a trust relationship with each other, bro. That's right. what you're dealing with in commerce, trust. If you believe right. in a higher power, you believe in that, like that there's a divine source or force of energy. Well, you being inside of this space or state of consciousness means that you're dealing with a trust issue now. Right. Because this contract or compact or oath between you and this divine source of energy, it also places upon you a beneficiary and a trustee the duty and obligation to tend to the land adequately right to tend to and cultivate now we know everybody ain't doing that we can't fight and argue about that so true but even that is just it's, it's nothing uh different bro if you got a girl and a son it's three of y'all that that's a trust right there you see what i'm saying like we functioning inside of these commercial states and spaces on a day-to-day -day basis because the commercial space is just built off of our natural function. This is just who we naturally are. You see what I'm saying? And anytime you go off in a business with somebody, bro, you're doing this business endeavor with somebody to actually see some type of a gain, a reciprocation. Now, you know, you got a lot of people that like to use the, you know, well, we ain't doing this for the money, brother. And then you say, well, okay, well, listen, good. I don't have any money, so how much is that service? Well, you know, we just accept a small donation of such and such and such and such. But, like, you know, it is about some type of a currency or some form of currency or reciprocation of energy. But we don't have to do the, the bait and switch with our people in order to get them to pay attention to what we're trying to say to them. All we got to do is be real with them. And they're going to automatically stand behind you and stand by you anyway. Because they're looking for a way out. Everybody don't need no savior. Like me. All I was looking for was a way out, King. So that's the reason I found out how to actually not manipulate the system, but to monopolize from it. The same way that the corporate industry that's owning everything inside of this little country that we call home done. They didn't rape us or rob us, bro. They tricked us out of it through contracts. It was our own ignorance, and they're still doing it. Now, ignorance don't mean stupidity. Ignorance just means our lack of information. 
when we read this inf this paperwork these people put in front of us, we don't be understanding what we sign it. We just expect that they're going to do biz, you know, they're going to do honest business in good faith. But as a reciprocation of that, no. There is no such thing as honest business in good faith. Well, them people, their contracts is not even designed that way. So I'm serious. And it's like I say, man, hey, look, it's not to be creating no type, no, no kind of dissent because we accept the responsibility for ourselves. Indeed, indeed. It is powerful. Uh, you know, you brothers are just making it so interesting and, uh, you know, all on the money for Will. So uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, what is it, uh, uh, Brother Zakur? I don't know, like, if you, if you want to chime in or something like this, because you've been uh, quiet. I know it's not your line of work, but, you know, you, I know you will have something to say. <laughs> Well, I'm just so super excited about silver. Okay. That's what I'm I'm excited about right now. All right. This uh, that's a monotomy. If anyone, needs, if anyone needs their gut dealt with, go to the next level. Okay. Um, Me myself, I'm about to send you the the finance uh, to get myself some monatomic silver yeah. from you, and uh, yeah. and and the the cell salts as well. You see, so starting 2020 on a whole different level. <laughs> and also, um, is that the only one you want? Because we want to take the, the time, uh, you know, to, to let you brothers say what you're offering uh, so that people can know and, uh, you know, sense uh, where to get the stuff uh, that you offer uh, and stuff like this. Uh, anything else, um, what is the core? Well, I mean, um, if you want me to introduce what I'm offering, I can show you the, the gut junction function kit. And then yeah. I have two, two new silvers here. One is uh, tetra silver, which is uh, tetra, tetra oxide silver. And this one here is a protein. It's coming directly from the patent owner. Uh, it's a nebulizing formula for those that have HIV, cancer, herpes, and stuff like that. Kills 99% of the herpes and the HIV right there nebulized through the lung directly through the lung and uh that's why i'm so hoarse now and so she gave me some trials a test and i have it being tested right now through one of the top doctors uh dr Yunbaum out of washington dc who tests for all hiv drugs and chemistries for the fda so now we have our own once he puts his signature on his bottle we can go forth and deal with uh viruses because the FDA doesn't have any type of um, jurisdiction over this particular patent here. So okay. we can go forward and, uh, it, you know, once manufacturing. So, together. so is it, is it available uh, uh, yet or is something? Uh, small, small, small increments. You can, I can only get maybe about less than a hundred bottles um, at a time, okay. you know, but that's going to be within maybe about a month. Is that, that's uh, very really important. 30 days to get it done. Excuse me. Uh, very, I said that's very important because, I, I, so as we heard, that there's an epidemic uh, about this uh, in the community or something or in the world itself. Well, I'm in I'm in Atlanta, and uh, I I pretty much have one of the only testimonies of helping someone reverse their HIV mm -hmm. uh, using the humic fulvic acid um, chemistry. But all of these elements here are known for reversing and clarifying and cleaning up the body at that level of cleansing viruses. These are aimed at viruses and bacteria, unfriendly bacteria. This one here, you need about two bottles. So it's 0.5. These, you get 2.5 bottles like this. It's yes. 0.5 ounce. And you only get one ounce should do it. Indeed. And also, uh, as a quick break before we ask uh, the Brother Dynamo and uh, Brother uh, Exu, uh, you know, to, to, to promote their, 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 you know, their work and stuff like this. So we're just going to play one uh, uh, short infomercial uh, about one of the products uh, Brother uh, Zako developed or helped develop or something like this, and we, which we worked with him on. Or something oh, like that, 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 so that you can be aware. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, so that was the Z shield uh, 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 radiation, Z radiation shield. Where, where well, I have, some new, I, I have some new technology on the Z radiation shield technologies, and, oh. um, and that's definitely aimed at the 6G. It's, it's for 6G because they're going to oh, jump. Way ahead of, the, of time, man. <laughs> where they're, they're bypassing 5G right now. You see uh, you're gonna, you're, I didn't hear that. Well, well really because, hear. because, you know, because the 6G. You they, heard they that you to... first, eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm opening up one of my boxes right here. Mm -hmm. So I got, I got all my boxes already boxed up, ready to go. But these uh, kits are, let me see. I know they're 127 for this whole package here, but you get pretty much everything to clean the gut out. So you get the mucoid plaque cleanse, cleans the mucus plaque, that's a seven day mucus plaque cleanse. Okay. Right there, straight up. Very, very friendly, very easy, very safe. And then you have the uh, alkaline salt drops, which is the gut junction function, 12.7 pH salt drops. Mm -hmm. So for those that got cancer or viruses, bacteria, we're only aiming at the gut because it, you know your enzymes and our your gut enzymes require requires um requires uh the proper environment okay. the proper the proper environment and then we have the o2 drops which is the ph drops and this regulates and alkalizes the alkalizing salt here and um very simple where do they go to to get these things if ever they need actually i'll give my email address because right now i'm only dealing with private now my website i'm not even really putting my website out after i do my my uh project my um farm project excuse me garden project um that's when i'm going to go ahead and release because i'll be a lot more healthier and able because I've been remodeling and I, you know, remodeling and getting my foundation together out here in Atlanta. Um, so I'll leave my email address, and then we have the humic fulvic acid complex drops, okay. along with the apple juice probiotics, the master's enzyme. Okay, so this enzyme here is for those that have uh, gut issues and also diabetes cancer and things like that it eats sugar this enzyme here was released and given to me by the top one of the top scientists in in the healing arena charlotte masters so i named it after her she's one of the scientists who didn't make it but it's the master's enzyme so i got all of this chemistry right here for 45 days to get your gut correct all right what's up so there's a package fully that is at a hundred. This, this whole package is like a hundred and twenty-seven dollars only. Eh? Oh, it's one twenty-seven, and you wow. get that's that, that you get that, you get you pretty much get you, you get everything in the salt. I mean, all of this stuff right here. Everything so each one right. of these each one of these are twenty bucks. One, two, three, four. All of these right here equals twenty dollars each. But individually, they do cost like $30, $40. So you're getting a better deal getting the full package. Indeed, and then, you know, indeed. of course, yeah, you well, get the salt. Uh, and expect expect uh, something from me because uh, I need uh, a few of those from you this year round. And uh, also, thank you for everything on that one. And uh, Brother uh, Dynamo, so how i know you are coming uh with the courses uh and uh on uh zero point university so can you let the people know what they'll be learning and uh how much it will cost to join the course and where do they go to join that course all righty all righty man uh first of all i just want to say man yeah i appreciate everything that big homie doing man i like that you know he got his stuff together that's called structure right there that's indeed, pioneering indeed. hey um yeah if you uh want to go ahead like i say man we mainly focused on estate planning you can contact me at zero point university.com if you want to email me you can email me at zero point dot univ at gmail.com uh 
So basically, like I say, that's what we focused on for the most part, man, is how to correct the status of your estate. How do you take back what we consider as lawful authority over your estate, something that was usurped from you through a contract and has been used to actually, I don't care what it is, lock you up, send you debts, uh, debt letters, debt collection letters, bills. It's that exemption that authorizes them to actually do this. So our thing is to actually be able to show everybody how to make all of the necessary and proper investments, not just correcting your status, because correcting your status is one thing. Maintaining the correction of that status is another thing. And the way that you maintain the correction of that status is being able to make the necessary investments for yourself. One of my things is, is bro, if you're not making at least $150,000 a year, and you don't have at least six different incomes or forms of income coming in, you're still below par of the bottom of the tax bracket. You see what I mean? So even fathoming wealth right now is just an imagination of going wild for you. You see what I mean? So like, that's my thing. We want to show people how to actually not just gain information, but how to use it, how to put all of the information that you get to practice and that you can see it, reciprocate what you invest into it at least a thousand times over. You see what I'm saying? So that's what we based on. And it's like with the big homie saying, the health and everything, because we all the way about being able to balance everything around the board. Like I don't, not downsizing nobody else, but I'm probably one of the coldest uh, vegan detoxers I know. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so trust me, bro. When it comes to this human body, it's not anything I don't know about it. I've studied everything about it. So that. that's something else that we offer, man. So, you know, just with that being said, man, I do appreciate you, Vlad, man, for actually having me, bro. Pleasure. I do uh, hope that we get an opportunity to link up and build again. Indeed, indeed. So feel free if you have to go, because I know you were in an auction or something like this. We truly appreciate you. I really did not expect. I already gave the brothers the bad news. And then there you were. So I really thank you for, for, for having been with us and stuff like this. And you wouldn't be the same without you. So you know, Most definitely. If the big homie got my email, man, tell him, man, if he get an opportunity, man, I'd love to actually uh, send okay. me something so that I can get in tune with him. Indeed. Before you go, allow him to say uh, about his piece so that you mm -hmm. know if anything he has to offer, if it's anything you, you yourself want to work with or something like this. Brother D. Miller L. Most definitely. Uh, you, you, yes, yeah, sir. You, you, you're good. So uh, let us know what you have going on for, for us in, in, in 2020 and yeah. how can we get connected with you and use your services. Okay, uh, I wanted to first, man, thank you, Vlad, and I appreciate you, bro, uh, for having me on the platform, man. You have a dope show, dope panel. Um, I appreciate the brothers, man, that I got to uh, interact with, you know what I'm saying, on a small level uh, that we was able to interact. Um, you know, as far as uh, what I have and, and what we have going on, wow. Um, you know, bottom line, I think that... Um, what I have in common with the brothers is um, our our desire uh, to help, you know what I'm saying, to do that work in, with, with our folks, you know what I'm saying, to develop good relationships with our folks. Indeed. I think that's why we want to do the type of work that we're doing, Indeed. you know what I'm saying? So my work is no different than that. Um, I just, you know, came to it in a certain context. And that context is, um, you know, or at least from my lens, I see that some of the greatest, you know, that we've ever produced, um, they had this economic empowerment ele element to their, to their demonstration. And I'm going to say that a lot of the times to cut out a lot of the foolishness and a lot of the wanderings, the, 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 the bad behaviors or you know, the, the things that, you know, necessarily aren't going right or just these other distractions, you know? One of the things that I noticed they, the leaders I'm speaking of now, they wanted to draw our attention to us focusing on our work, you know, kind of like how we was raised at home. Mind your business. 
You know, you, you, you're minding your business and a lot of things you don't have to worry about a lot of, you know, other kinds of distractions that are happening on the outside. You can just kind of focus on bringing what is within out. You know what I'm saying? You're not, you're not distracted by what's out there, but you're more focused on cultivating what is within and putting out something into the society that, again, the people feel like it is only but natural for them to get into like a reciprocity type of relationship with you where, okay, you're giving to them and now they're giving back to you, whether it's, you know, it's in the form of money or, you know, trust and, and, and this sort of thing. I think that that is healing to us as a group. So one of the practical ways that we brought this forward is in, the, in, in this concept called Asusu. Maybe you've heard of it. Um, this is the original form of banking. This is where we pool our money. And at a certain cadence and time, whether it's weekly, monthly, biweekly, you know, whatever the case may be, and no, no matter the value, right, as far as the contribution into the pool, um, we found a way to, again, start to develop those relationships, not only holding ourselves accountable as individuals, right, which is, I think, a major aspect of the conversation now. If you're gonna if you're gonna be dealing with your health, if you're gonna be dealing with keeping your estate intact, accountability is number one. You know, so I say the susu has caused us as individuals, as it's mostly men. We've definitely had females in the circle, uh, but the deal is is that holding oneself accountable is like number one to maintaining a society. You know, last but not least. I think that we end up developing a greater trust for one another. These are people that, again, are not blood affiliated. We don't know each other in that context. Uh, many of us have never even pressed hands. But I think that we have a certain relationship and a certain chemistry, if you will, right? A technology, a certain chemistry that allows for us to grow and develop further as a group. Right. So like now I actually there's a certain amount of um, pleasure that I get out of seeing my, my brothers do well. You know what I'm saying? That is that is key to me. So, again, the susu is something that allows for us to pull our money together and then to allow for us to kind of cultivate those dreams that we have as individuals. I think we all are looking for finance to to execute on our, on our certain, you know, concepts. But a lot of times we lack the finance. We work together as a group. We put money in a pot. When it's your turn, you now have a degree of finance to make that a reality. I don't see any harm in that. In fact, I see all the benefit in that. And that's, that's what it is with us. Uh, again, D. Miller L, the, the website is morexbitcoinsolutions.com. Come see the site, you know what I'm saying? See the information that is there. I can be found on all your social media platforms. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's Morex Bitcoin Solutions. Um, yes, you know, again, Vlad, thank you so much to the brothers on the panel, man. Uh, salute to you. I hope to uh, do this again, man, real soon. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. So the dynamo has, has dropped and uh, he had to go. So we thank him, you know, for, for having been here, Brother D. Miller L. Like he, I myself is part of the ISUSU, it's group economics indeed, as, and also learning a whole lot because the SUSU is not about uh, fiat. It's, I mean, it's not about uh, dollar, with dollar, it's with Bitcoin. And you get, as you participate in, you get uh, to know how to transact with Bitcoin prior to Bitcoin being the, you see, like preparing yourself for the new market or something like this. So I was so fortunate to be part of that uh, platform with you, Brother Demilda L. And uh, we call even uh, Dynamo, we call Brother Zakur to come in and then we know him in. Just drop a few things in the path and learn how to transact with Bitcoin at the same time and having to deal with uh, some great brothers, you know, who are doing great things uh, in that arena. So thank you, uh, Brother D, for your time. You may drop if you feel, unless you have something else uh, to say, but you have done greatly with us uh, today and we thank you for all the services.
and anyone just check murex uh, bitcoinsolutions.com and you'll be able to navigate through the site and then see everything that he's offering uh, to the community and then uh thank you once more uh all of you but there's a core with all of the stuff oh my god i don't even know when you have time to do anything else you always come look now you're already ahead with uh, 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 uh i mean uh, uh 6g when 5g is just developing and stuff like this now i just learned about something that is not mainstream yet that this is the real this is the real yeah. world right here indeed no all of these things are very powerful stuff i already know you know they, they, we need those things even the bible tell us about the 12 cell swords and everything like this is the foundation of life itself so we thank you for putting all the time toward these things as well and you know i mean illuminating our minds to the basics of things you know like which is the, taking care of Malkut, the kingdom itself you see what i mean so we thank you for all the great works you do and also that i know this is from michael from uh, great britain right so uh, the the yes the crown. i need me to, i need to get me one from him you know what i mean this because this is very good to protect the pineal gland and to keep he, it activated he, he sent so, me the bracelet the phone the glasses everything wow <laughs> so you know he's also doing great work we wish he could have been here with us and there was ziki from 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 uh, england here with us uh, hopefully he's here and we take england for 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 their participation yeah. and stuff like set that. it up set it up so we can all get on and speak about energetics energetics yes indeed and you heard it the brother want to come and talk about energetics because you, know, you you have no idea when this brother start telling you about the type of technologies is working with you, you can just have your mind blown <laughs> you this, know this this here this here is for all the the medical marijuana this plate right here what uh -huh. with actually amplifies it 20 times the medical marijuana okay yeah yeah so, so they, we literally they have give they, life to a, a gmo or something no, they don't have to use as much of it. It cleans it up. It it in, in, infuses energy and and uh, energetics, oh. so it actually amplifies it. So you don't they don't have to use as much of it. You know what I mean? Okay, so, that's yeah. what's up. Because me, I consume the oil, and from time to time, I take a few puffs and stuff like this yeah. to sleep. I I did a, a presentation for I did a presentation for a CBD oil company, and mm -hmm. I had two dispensaries call me out of uh, Nevada to begin the process of getting them nutrients for their new yeah. line and also an energetic line of marijuana that actually helps conduct energy and, and information. So we can actually program the actual, the, 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 the minerals and nutrients and also the uh, monoatomics from within the marijuana. That's what that was to sell. So thank you for all this info, this great info from Dynamo Jack of uh, Secret Energy, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Secret Energy Exchange 369 on YouTube, and also Brother uh, Exo Miller L on Facebook, Twitter, and all the great platforms, also uh, um, YouTube as well, where he really share his knowledge, you know, I mean, with us in the, in the, on, that, on that platform. And also thanking him for having been here with us once again. We couldn't be more happy to have this panel today with these great spirits indeed. So also, Brother Adama, you know, we thank you uh, once again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Guys, I couldn't thank you more, you see what I mean? Because as you can see, you know how I do. I get excited like that. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I truly Thank enjoyed you. it and learned a lot. I know I had so much to ask and so much to say with you guys and uh, our brains a little bit, but the time, you know, I mean, keeps on running when we're having fun. So maybe that, that that shouldn't be the last time because we have so much more to touch on and stuff like this. So we will keep in touch and see when we can do this once more. All right. So thank All you right. guys uh, for for being here once again. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you with us. Honest. Excellent. Likewise. Thank, Thank you much. Glad. Have a great one, Peace, guys. Bro. Talk to you soon. Peace now. Thank you. Braxton.
today. Purchase your tracks today. Contraband, this is a contraband.